So, day one of Warhammer 40k spoiler season is coming to an end. Well, at least for me. I don't think I'm going to do an episode after this one. It's been quite the busy day, but yeah, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Magus Lucia Kane, make sure you check that one out. It is definitely a commander that I did not expect to see, but I am very happy now exists. But don't leave just yet, because on this episode, I've got a commander that is saying... Okay, well, I'm saying about the commander. Anyways, <laughs> yes, it's finally here. Yeah, there's there's a reason why this is probably the last episode. It's been a very long but very fun day. And also, uh, you know, why don't you just blame Eddie? Blame Eddie in the comments below for no reason other than just for fun. Or, you know, also, if I do make any mistakes on this episode, even though Eddie just, you know, does a great job helping and recommending cards, um, yeah, make sure you blame Eddie. It's always Eddie's fault, not mine. And now with that said, let's jump into it. And like I've said on pretty much uh, all of these, you know, Warhammer 40k episodes, if I mispronounce anything, which I am definitely probably going to do, uh, my apologies. Regardless, uh, Bellicor, uh, Bay, Bay Locker, Bellicor, I don't know. The Dark Master, 6-5 Demon Noble with flying that costs three blue, black, red. It has Prince of Chaos. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life or X the number of demons you control. And Lord of Torment, whenever another demon enters the battlefield under your control, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So, oh my goodness, a demon tribal commander, finally, and okay, I should say, a specific demon tribal commander. We have seen other demon tribal commanders in the past, technically, but those have basically been like, oh, okay, you, you know, double devils, you know, demons and imps, or, you know, angels, demons and dragons, and... Yeah, those just end up being more so like a, con a conglomeration of all of those kind of creature types versus specifically a demon tribal commander that's like, no, demons all day, every day, right here, let's go. And demon is actually a creature type that I actually mentioned on an episode, I believe it was like two years ago or so, where I talked about tribes that needed a commander or a dedicated commander for themselves. Demons was one of them. And yeah, we finally, finally have it. Grix just seems like an interesting color combination for this and one that's got a lot of potential and this demon tribal commander has a ton of potential and can do some really exciting things first up one life for one card is a great deal in commander so yeah i mean or i should say one life per one card because yeah you're gonna want to have more than just you know this demon in play essentially so get some demons in play get this into play draw a ton of cards sure lose some life but we've got ways to make that up right on top of that, I mean, this commander is basically also like a war storm surge for your demons. So just have your demons come into play and just ping down whatever you need to, whether again, that's creatures, planeswalkers, or just your opponent's faces, which is definitely the most fun out of all the options. Yeah, you can take things down really quickly with this as well. And of course, keep in mind, each of these are very simple ETBs. There is like, you know, very specific part to it where it's like, oh, okay, you know, no, it's like, you know, when enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand or some nonsense like that, that does not, you know, appear on this card at all. So essentially, yeah, I mean, your commander's ETB itself is incredibly easy for you to use and abuse. And of course, it's incredibly easy to use and abuse any other demons ETBs, you know, in this commander's trigger with that again. Basically, you have a lot of potential to draw a lot of cards and get a lot of, you know, basically again, War Storm Surge essentially triggers to ping down things quickly. So this commander not only can get you to dig deep down into your deck to get you the exact cards you need to win, but it can also get you over the finish line as well. And yeah, there are plenty of fantastic demons out there that can help. Now, really quick, if you, like me, are excited about this new Demon Tribal Commander, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below, because, you know, when new exciting commanders are spoiled like this one, even before the actual card comes out, which I believe is going to be on October 7th is when the product's available, uh, players tend to actually try to build around that commander ahead of time sometimes, especially for really exciting ones like this one, so cards that work well with it might go up in price sooner rather than later, so yeah, check that link out. But now with all that said, let's jump into the cards to consider.
First up, while there aren't a ton of demons that you're getting access to because you're getting blue, and there are, and we'll talk about some of them here in a bit, what you are getting access to are some fantastic blink spells like Essence Flux, Ghostly Flicker, and Displace, which are incredible with this commander. Again, the Dark Master absolutely loves ETBs. Well, its own and also, you know, other demons coming into play. So sure, cast Essence Flux for a single blue mana to blink one of your creatures, exile it, bring it back. Now, this is, you know, a spirit specific spell for an extra benefit. Who cares? We don't care about the extra counter. All we care about is this is a one mana way to use and abuse ETBs. So again, if we've got, you know, say five demons in play, we blink our commander, draw five, you know, lose five life for one mana. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Or again, if we blink another demon, essentially War Storm Surge trigger, you know, ping something down for just a single mana as well. On top of, you know, the flexibility for these spells to be utilized, you know, as a way to save our creatures from targeted removal. So, of course, a bigger version of this spell can also be incredibly impactful, like Ghostly Flicker, Exile 2, target artifacts, creatures, and relay engine control, return them to the battlefield under your control, or Displace, which basically does the exact same thing, but just for creatures. But yeah, three mana, blink two creatures. Again, these can be ways to draw a massive amount of cards and ping things, or, you know, just ping some things down. And of course, Conjurer's Closet is a fantastic way to get some additional value out of ETBs. Just, you know, free throughout the game once this is in play. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature control and turn to the battlefield under your control. Basically, hey, you see that ETB on your creature? Go get it. And while not free, well, you know, unless you got an infinite combo going on with this as well, which sure, go for it. Deadeye Navigator is an incredible way to use and abuse ETBs throughout the game. Soul Bond, as long as it's fairer than another creature. Each of those creatures has pay one to blue, exiles creature returns to the battlefield under your control. With this soul pond to your commander, that's like basically, you know, hey, okay, how many demons you got in play? Five? Uh, yeah, pay two mana, draw five, lose five. Yeah, sign me up for that. Or again, if it's another demon, hey, do you want to take out basically everything on the board? Awesome, just start paying two and pinging things down. Or again, ping your opponent's faces, because that's the most fun. And of course, since you are in black, I mean, you've got plenty of ways to get back a ton of creatures at once with some mass reanimation effects, and one incredible one in this deck is Patriarch's Bidding. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creature cards of a type chosen this way from their graveyard to the battlefield. So yeah, you're, um, you're gonna choose demons and get all those demons back and, uh, have fun with all those ETVs again. Uh, let's just say your commander is in play, and of course your commander probably is when you cast this. Let's just get back all of our demons from our graveyard and have a ton of triggers pinging down a lot of things. Or again, I mean, at a certain point towards the end of the game, this can just be, you know, a way to take players out. Get all your demons out out of nowhere and then ping down your opponents. So yeah, in combination between blink spells and also, you know, reanimation effects and, and you know, those kinds of... I guess, you know, I don't know what you call them, but you know, those kind of like feign death effects essentially where, hey, this creature's gonna die, but then it comes right back effects. Yeah, you've got a lot of options to use and abuse ETBs, whether it's your commanders or your other demons as well. And my goodness, can you take advantage of those kinds of cards with cards like Reflections of Litjara, Molten Echoes, and Mirror March, which are incredible with this commander. Reflections of Litjara says, as enter the battlefield, choose a creature type. Um, you're going to choose demons. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, the chosen type, copy that spell. And of course, a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. So first up, even just getting your commander in play with this. All right, when you cast your commander, you get an initial copy of your commander. Now, Legend rule, okay, obviously applies. You're only going to keep one, but still you're going to be getting ETBs, you know, drawing cards, pinging things down. And yeah, obviously this doubles up every single one of your other demons. So have fun with that. I mean, all the double, you know, War Storm Surge triggers essentially and, you know, whatever other triggers they might have. Speaking of doubling, we can also, you know, double things up with Molten Echoes. As enters battlefield, choose a creature type, um, demon. When a non-token creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under control, create a token to copy that creature, tokens haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So the copy might not stick around, but we can swing out with it right away, and again, War Storm Surge triggers! Or how about a massive amount of tokens, or a potential massive amount of tokens with Mirror March, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under control, flip a coin until you lose a flip, for each flip you won, create tokens to copy that creature, tokens gain haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So kind of like a riskier Molten Echoes with higher upside, but also a lower floor. But yeah, I mean, just a couple of flips that go your way can be devastating for your opponents. 
And speaking of devastating, I mean, yeah, I've mentioned this card like 18 times so far. Warstorm Surge! Yeah, it's gonna be great in this kind of attack. Whenever a creature is battlefield under control, deals damage equal to its power to any target. Basically, again, just, you know, an enchantment version of your commander's trigger for your demons. So you are essentially doubling up on that trigger itself by saying, okay, I get one demon coming into play. Based on its power, I'm pinging down two things. And, and yeah, this can really add up throughout the game, especially, again, when you take into account all those faint death effects, all those, you know, blink effects, all the ways to get your creatures back, and all the ways to make even more token copies of them. Yeah, things can get pretty absurd pretty quickly. And speaking of absurd, yeah, there are plenty of powerful demons out there and really powerful ones with really powerful ETBs like, you know, Rakdos the Showstopper. A 6-6 with flying and trample when enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp, destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. And ironically, this is actually one of the, you know, commanders I mentioned earlier that, yes, technically there are demon tribal commanders out there already, but also, you know, they're also kind of a conglomeration of, you know, certain creature types. So yeah, this one's demon, devil, or imp. Obviously, the only one you care about for this deck, though, is demon. Basically, hey, your demons are staying in play. Your opponent's creatures, who knows? They might get taken out. Let's swap some coins and take out basically half their creatures. And of course, again, I mean, just keep this in mind, you know, with like Essence Flux, any of these great ETBs, just like, hey, okay, I'll just uh, pay one mana, I'll blink this and uh, destroy even more things. Or how about Guy Ruda? When it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from one of those cards on the battlefield under your control. Get a uh, random thing off the top of the library. Uh, yeah, that sounds great to me, especially when it might be another massive demon like, you know, Rakdos the Showstopper. So have fun with, again, all that extra value, all those Warstorm Surge triggers. Yeah, I went like a minute without saying it, but still, yeah, Warstorm Surge triggers are fun. Speaking of a fun trigger, though, Overseer the Damned has when it's Battlefield to may destroy target creature. And on top of that, whenever a non tone creature mode controls dies, create a tapped 2 2 black zombie creature token. So this demon can take creatures out and also make you a massive army of zombies throughout the game. But speaking of taking things out, my goodness, Lord Xander is brutal. And while Lord Xander might be a vampire noble, it is also a demon. So yeah, fits right into this deck. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand rounded down. So that's mean. When it attacks defending player, mills half their library round down. Also nice. And then when it dies, target opponent sacrifices half the non lane permits they control rounded down. Brutal. Absolutely brutal especially again since we've got ways with this deck to you know get lord xander back out you know blink it you know feign death it all those lovely things another great etb that we would love to use and abuse in this deck is cardor doom scourge when it enters the battlefield until your next turn creature opponents control attack each combat of able and attack a player other than you if able top of that whenever an attacking creature dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one life yeah, basically, its ETB is goad every creature you don't control. And it's even better than goad, actually, because it's like, hey, if your opponents actually even get things out into play afterwards, it doesn't matter. They still have to go elsewhere if those creatures have haste or can swing or whatnot. So being able to use and abuse this can really make it so that your opponents are wide open for you to swing through and also, you know, just make them swing into very bad situations and also utilize them to take out your other opponents as well. And if you can really use and abuse this ETB again and again and again, you can really control the game. And speaking of controlling things, well, there's Malfagor, which has a high risk, high reward ETB. Winters the battlefield, discard your hand. So that's a massive, massive downside, but each opponent sacrifices a creature for each card discarded this way. Again, you can easily get a lot of cards in your hand, so this easily can be a one sided board wipe that, you know, on top of it being a 6 6 flying demon that also, you know, Warstorm surges something when it comes into play with your commander. And yeah, if you've got a way to actually, you know, blink your commander, maybe like a Conjurer's Closet, you easily can refill your hand. Next up, though, a fantastic demon in this deck. I mean, this one is incredible. Whenever a non tone creature you control dies, you may exile. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except a 1 1, and it's a nightmare dish with other types. Now, keep in mind, obviously, if you are running a ton of reanimation effects, you got to be careful with this one because you, you know, you might want to get back certain demons in that way. But yeah, this is basically just like, hey, do you want just extra free ETBs on your demons? Great. So when your Rakdos the Showstopper dies, cool, let's get just, you know, additional token copy of it. It might just be a 1-1, one, one, but still, you can utilize that ETB to great effect. Next up, of course, there are a ton of incredibly powerful demons out there. I mean, 
Villas Broker of Blood definitely comes to mind in, you know, combination with this commander. This is incredible. An 8-8 Flying Demon. So first up, uh, yeah, ping something for 8. Sounds fun to me. Pay a black, pay 2 life. Target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until on turn. And on top of that, whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. So again, with our example, let's say our commander is coming into play. Cool. All right, we lose 5 life, you know, draw 5 cards because we have 5 demons in play. Uh, but plus Villas, uh, since we lost 5 life, we also draw five more cards on top of that. So this basically just doubles up our commander's ETB when it comes to the amount of cards that we are drawing. We still lose the same amount of life, draw double the cards. On top of it again being a giant 8-8 flying demon. That also can take out creatures, making us lose life, and also, you know, drawing you more cards in the process. Next up though, how about a lower to the ground demon that can really help us out as well. A 2-3 death touch with Varagoth Blood Sky Sire. It has both pay one the black target player search the library for a card, then shovels their library and puts that card on top of it. So basically, like, you know, like a vampiric tutor on an attack. And uh, and yeah, this can help us go get the exact card that we need for the situation that we're in. And also keep in mind, if we are getting Vergoth in play when our commander's already in play, um, yeah, this is actually dealing the damage with our commander's trigger. So death touch, take any creature out. But yeah, that's on top of being able to tutor for the perfect cards for us as well. Which might just be Archfiend of Depravity, a 5-4 flying demon that has the beginning of each opponent's end step. That player chooses up to two creatures they control, then sacrifices the rest. So this can just keep decimating our opponent's armies, keeping them down to just two creatures each. And yeah, chances are pretty likely with all of our massive demons, uh, we're going to have a massive advantage over them when they've got their little armies just waiting there for us to take them out with our Warstorm Surge Triggers and other ways as well. Finally, though, one awesome card that we get access to because this is a Grixis Tribal Demon Commander, Prince of Thralls. It's a 7-7 demon for four blue, black, black, and a red. Whenever a permanent and opponent controls is put into a graveyard, put that card into play under your control unless that opponent pays three life. So this counts for any permanence. So if your opponent sacrifices an Evolving Wilds, um, it is now your Evolving Wilds unless they want to pay three life for you not to get it. But yeah, obviously this applies to any permanence, including creatures as well. So yeah, I, I mean, either your opponents are going to be drained a ton by this or you're going to get a lot of free stuff. And that sounds like a lot of fun. You know what also sounds fun? Draining your opponents out with Psychosis Crawler. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So yeah, obviously this one is not a demon, but uh, still. I mean, this, you know, this scary thing you can uh, hang out with the demons as well, right? Because now whenever your commander ETBs, sure, you lose life, but also your opponents lose life too. So again, with our example, draw five, lose five. Uh, I mean, now you get five cards. Your opponents get nothing except for a loss of five life each. And again, in a multiplayer game like, like Commander, what? That's like 15 life in total with your three opponents? So yeah, this can drain your opponents out quite quickly and dish out a lot of pain throughout the game. But now this episode is coming to a close. It's time for me to give you my final thoughts on... Oh, again, here we go. Okay, I'm going to mess this up. Um... I'm just gonna go with Bellacore, okay? That that just sounds right. And, and I'm I'm sure there's a lot of Warhammer fans that are like, no, you're wrong! It's Bay Locker! And probably not. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't know. Anyways, I am really excited to see that we finally get a real, you know, demon tribal commander that is dedicated to demon tribal. Not, you know, demons, devils, imps, not demons, angels, dragons, whatnot. One that is like, no, all demons, all day, all the time, right here, right now, except Psychosis Crawler can join, because Psychosis Crawler is cool. But yeah, an incredible ETB itself, and also an incredible Warstorm Surge, which is like the 80th time I've said it in this episode, but still, Trigger, that can be great at helping take out things, take out your opponents, take out the Planeswalkers, but mostly, yeah, take out your opponents, ping them in the face. But again, if you, like me, are excited about this commander, make sure you check out that link in the description below for the cards I talked about on this episode, because again, when a new exciting commander like this one is spoiled, players don't tend to wait, and uh, yeah... Prices of cards that work well with the commander might go up sooner rather than later, so make sure you check that out. And also make sure you check other episodes out on my channel, like, you know, the other quick takes I've talked about today, and make sure you stay tuned for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com.
We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.